So let's start. Hope you are in a great mood, and we can uh, have a nice to meet up, 25 minutes with pleasure, and so on. So uh, let's me, let me introduce myself. I'm a GE manager in Retail Company, and also a board member of Nurses Commons Foundation. It's the community of practitioners of nurses, and our goal is to make nurses as an industry standard way of development in the corporate world. And so uh, before I start my story, I would like to share you a question. What is actually inner source collaboration? And imagine you have two teams. First team needs some feature from another, and second team are unable to do it in time. And what they can do next is to provide the code itself rather than to have the feature and wait for the, for the delivery. And after some time, the first team returns uh, the code itself. And uh, provide them an open the request, and the second team clicking on the big green button merge to request, and then success. That's uh, how it's explained in the books. That's how it usually occurs in open source. So, you uh, in the open source conference, you should be familiar with that. But the most uh, typical case in the inner source world, in the companies, it's uh, when the buff teams struggling and have a good amount of questions why it's not happening why i should uh, care about the other squad why uh, how to run it how and a good amount of questions and in the end we have a campaign from our side that's your end resource it's not working and you're going to talk how to fail your resource collaboration if no that's ways you can avoid them and remove that friction so let's start and the first is about the culture. Uh, usually, if the company develops software as it was usual um, years ago, with close click stories, no reading is all, and so on, and not that managers don't encourage the teams to do a collaboration, and then you can face some problems or issues when you start to talk about, hmm, uh, let's uh, collaborate, let's live together and build a common software. Of course, uh, that can be a problem. And the same for the cultural difference side. So if you are not familiar about the differences in different cultures, so for example, I work in, in the multinational uh, company, and sometimes I have no idea why my colleagues doing something. And knowing that helps me to understand it better and to remove the feature. What we can do here? So first, we can ensure that company boost the collaboration. And uh, maybe we should start to think about and uh, improve the culture before we are starting talking about inner source, because that can be a good offer to you. And uh, secondly, we should know more about cultural differences. We can read the books, for example, the culture map is the good starting point for that. Or you can uh, learn from your colleagues why they should do that, why they are doing something. And after all, uh, that can be a, not a problem anymore for you because you are you do know why they doing in some way. Let's go into second second way to fail in collaboration, and that's uh, about the matrix. That's the about the answer question why they should do do, do the collaboration. So since the inner source have the same rules, uh, have the rules from open source, and open source is voluntary, voluntary tree driving um, and motivation about uh, uh, and motivation about why I should collaborate teams from the personal feelings that I should do that, I must do that. And here is the same. And post driven development because boss said that you should collaborate will not work. And the answer here, is here lies on the two sides. First, the side, side of the team or side of the company. And company should understand what benefits uh, they achieve uh, while adopting inner source principles. And uh, they are listed on the left. And on the right side, uh, we are not created, we are not imagined this uh, list of advantages uh, that engineers receive after the inner source job. They are came from the latest uh, research about the state of inner source, we ask practitioners what you had as a consequence, what engineers feel about inner source after some time of practicing, 
and they feel that uh, they achieve these benefits. And only when they understand and truly believe that they will achieve that uh, benefits, they, the inner source collaboration can appear. Uh, in other side, uh, if you're both saying that you must collaborate, that's not work definitely. Let's go next. The next point about documentation. So you're in open source masters, and you know that's almost impossible to have a successful open source project and still be successful. Uh, but for the corporate world, uh, it's a little bit different thing. And uh, especially when he just says that uh, working product is much more important than documentation, you can fix the projects without any readme, without any information how to run the application, how to start to develop, how to contribute there. And the answer here is to look on open source checklist. So, for example, through this thing, you can open it and uh, discard the items that you should have inside your project if you want to have a successful open source and then open source project, plus some additional corporate stuff. And I call it like everything that's called. So, uh, apart from the technical documentation, you also should have and will be great if you keep it uh, near from the code the business. Documentation, so explaining what uh, in the business terms doing some parts of your system. Uh, great if you uh, have uh, in the other mode the business flows explaining how your software is working and then you can render the nice pictures from the code itself. The same for the architecture, so since you're integrating with another external systems inside your environment, so great if you have that picture explaining what components your system. System I have and uh, what external systems uh, you, your system is integrated with. And the same for the integrational part. Since you cannot live alone in the corporate world, you definitely will be integrated with someone else. It will be great to have a contract. And this contract will allow you to generate some bot, will allow you to build the UIs and after explain the inner source uh, consumers how your software is working. And the same for infrastructure. You have common code, but your deployments are separately. And great to have examples how to uh, deploy this code. And that uh, can dramatically increase the speed of onboarding from new inner source customers since you are explaining how to create everything needed for this particular software. And in the end, we have a set of uh, open source documentations, set of corporate level documentations, and then you, have, you can have success on the documentation for the inner source. Going next, are you ready? And next, about the talking and speaking in, uh, between the teams, and sometimes people not familiar with open source principles, trying to, and uh, looking the so open with this story, I will spend a good amount of time writing the code and send the contributions, and then this contribution are is reproduced. Why is happening? Because because many reasons. Because they have to support the function. Because this architecture is incorrect. Or because uh, anything. And the answer here lies on the both sides. On the first side, uh, it will be great to uh, have the house rules and uh, make them visible to explain what is your next plans for the next second months and so on. Mentor the guests, mentor the contribution that they could also uh, want to have something from your system. The same for and the first, but the same for the second team. Uh, great to know the rules, know the functions that the system supports, and so on, and discuss your needs before. And that's the two way road, and uh, that's the key answer on the question how to not waste a good amount of time. Uh, while doing anything. <laughs> going next, going to the technical part. And technically, uh, your system can be monstrous, monolith, without any opportunity to easily uh, adapt to uh, slightly different needs, let's say. And here on the slide, just my example of a modular architecture that uh, supports the inner source collaboration. What I mean? Again, your system will be integrated with another, and then you should integrate a different master system, different external system. That means that you could, should have 
special layer called adapter and uh, easily replace adapter to another therapy for the uh, different environments and different systems. And the same for front end. Your, your needs can be uh, mobile application and some way needs a web application. You can have different design systems and uh, then your system should support a different uh, way of working in terms of front end. And the same for back end. You can have different business requirements and it will be great if your system will be easily replaceable by parts. And some parts can be co common, some parts can be custom. And that's architectural approach can help you to build the resource cooperation. Then your system can help uh, as much as possible customers inside your company. Going next. And next uh, item and next way to fail is about the DevOps practices and optimization and so on. So imagine you have a team, this team, uh, and you are receiving a bunch of contribution from external teams, and you should review them. You should ensure that your system will not drop after this uh, contribution and so on. And it's very to make a release especially if you have special team for responsible for allow, especially when uh, you have a good amount of things uh, manually to do in terms of the list. And uh, that's the painful collaboration you'll be doing. <laughs> and uh, the answer is here is to bring the old practices, the old uh, optimization, and so on and so on. And just a little example about that. And uh, the point on this one here, this slide is a look on here is this example of Heap, but uh, you can explore that it's not connected on your Heap. You can go to your project, explore is your practices and approach that you applied in your project are good in terms of delivery speed, in terms of understanding, in terms of uh, how they support this way of collaboration. A little example, git flow on the left, git have flow or and any other flow but simpler than git flow on the right. And can you guess uh, what is most uh, more uh, powerful in terms of, uh, let's say, in terms of, of attacking with uh, the in external contributions? I think on the right, right? <laughs> and uh, afterwards, uh, and making decisions and scanning the whole process that you use inside your project, you can answer yourself that uh, is it your practices and tools and processes are okay to handling the external contributions. Then you have uh, you can apply a bunch of uh, processes and practices that help you to meet with that kind of way of working. For example, each class you can bring it to your project and uh, merge as soon as possible the function, especially then the web, web, web and this function is still not tested, but you are able to do that because you are merging it and bringing production into both mode. And then, when you are ready, you are turning it on, and then uh, you are delivering it uh, as fast as possible. Uh, so, since you have external contributors, they will be happy to test it manually to, to ensure that this whole system will be okay after contribution. You can uh, open up uh, the separate deployment for every feature, for every incoming feature, and then it will be safer to you, to yourself, to your project. That's uh, the quality of uh, the project. You'll be at the same level than it was before contribution. And the point here is that uh, it will be great if you will ensure that your infrastructure is smart now. Uh, here is the set of open source tools, but it's just uh, one of examples. It's my personal choice. You can choose your own personal uh, set of uh, tools. Uh, the point here is to ensure that is your infrastructure smart enough? Is your delivery pipeline is flexible enough in order to tackle the inner source collaboration? And uh, if yes, then you will be successful. Successful in that kind of collaboration. If no, maybe you should think about uh, bringing new technologies, bringing new practices inside your project. Number nine. And number nine about the tests. Uh, imagine again, you're handling incoming contributions, and each time 
you're, you should do a good amount of stuff in terms of checking that is your system still working, is your system with the good quality. And uh, great if the those check will be automatically because uh, no customer wants to wait a long time while you are, you will say to them, mm, please change the thousand spaces and that will be answered after one week of waiting. And that's not so good in terms of speed of uh, working. And the same for linkers, style checkers, uh, quality data to get to pass in terms of uh, in the code of merge into production. And that's the whole stuff help you to boost the speed to make the operator scalier. So that's what the list of inner source uh, stoppers the ways how to fail in source operation. The idea here is to look on them and think, uh, are you doing some of them or you can wait and remove friction while doing inner source collaboration. And only the last point left, last way to fail, and this is the same way to fail. <coughs> so the idea is that's so you got uh, this whole base to build the inner source collaboration. What can do here to in order to make successful collaboration? First, uh, after the conference, you will go to the work, and maybe if you're already working in the project that's uh, collaborating with the inner source, maybe you can define the project, especially who can um, take the advantage of the inner source needed by a good amount of team. And you can bring their inner source. Uh, second, you can assess the process, the practices, the tools that are uh, used in this process, used in this project, and then um, somehow to avoid them and remove that friction, start an experiment, and try to bring more engineering practices that help the team uh, to get these uh, inner source advantages and benefits. So, in the end, uh, inner source contribution will be like that. Clicking on the big green button and then success. Thank you for watching and ready for your questions. Five minutes for questions. Any questions? Everything is clear. Here. My question what, what is in a source? I think that's something people are still trying to figure out. Then I have a question to you all. Uh, are you practicing inner source in your work? For you? No? Yes, yes. One, two. The interesting point here that's uh, much more practicing inner source support, but not only like inner source. And the fact is, if you're going with that work, you can bring your company into the practices, you can find the practitioners you can consult with. You can find patterns that you can bring your company and so on. And you can go to inner source community and check the check their materials that help you to build the engineering good engineering practices inside the company. Okay, thank you all for having me. Have a good day. Thanks, Dimitri. Thank